Welcome back to Everything House. Today we're talking about the miter saw. We're going to talk about its uses, the parts on it, and my review on this particular saw itself. Okay, the miter saw, this is the specific one is a skill saw, 12 inch dual bevel sliding miter saw. Okay, sounds like a mouthful. Um, but all of those things have a meaning. All right, so again, this is mainly for cross cuts and precision cuts with angles, things like that. Crown molding, baseboards, it's a must. This is the tool you use. So, miter saw, what does that mean? Okay, it makes a miter cut. Miter cut, what is that? So it's on an angle. So this is, a, is an example of a miter cut, all right? Anything other than 90 degrees. So if someone says uh, that wall needs a 30 degree miter, right? Basically, you're gonna set it to 30 degrees and then make your cut. Then you have your 30 degrees, okay? Sliding miter saw, all right? It means it can do this, you can slide. Now, why is that valuable? It's because a saw that can't slide, it's fixed as to what it can cut by, we're not plugged in here, right? So relax, boys and girls. It can only cut what the blade can cut up to. So it can only cut up to here, alrighty? Um, which is not that much. So I believe on this one, it's like nine inches or something like that. But by getting a slide, you just increased your cut capacity, okay? By, by a lot more, obviously, right? So now I can cut up to 16 inches, I believe, on this saw. Rarely are you gonna have to cut that much. If you're, gonna cu if you're cutting more than that, get the table saw. Or test your luck and get, use a circular saw. Um, so that's what that means. Dual bevel, all right, what does that mean? So this is a bevel, okay? It's where you can cut it, you can cut an angle this way, all right? That's useful if you need to, um, if you have certain trim that you can't cut um, flat, it won't let you. Um, or you can't cut it vertically and get your 45. So say it's, you know, 10 inch trim, right? 10 inches will put you here. You can't make the cut because it's too high, right? Because it won't slide under. But you could lay it down and then take your 45 and then now you can go ahead and get that nice 10 inch trim against the wall or baseboard, whatever you're doing. Um, also for, for crown molding, all right? So um, it's great for that and you're going to need it because on crown molding, you're going to have to do uh, your 45s are going to have sometimes we'll do a bevel. So you're going to have to do a 45 and then also go ahead and give it an angle to go ahead and get your trim wherever you need it to be. All right. So that's the general uses of a miter saw. The different parts of the tool. Okay. Um, it's very simple. So right here we have a lock. All right. So you go ahead and push it down, push this in, and then it'll lock it down. That's pretty much the transportation. Okay. I'll show you how it all breaks down later. Um, this right here. Okay. You see it on this camera is your slide lock so say you want to lock it in there you can't move it anymore all right this is your bevel lock down here okay it's just a little handle so say you want to lock it in at 15 degrees that way put it to 15 lock it down and now it won't move on you okay so then you have now here are your you have your fence locks you have a little wing nut type deal over here undo it and then you can move your, your fence left and right, depending on how big of a piece you want to cut. So the thing about the miter saw and well, pretty much any saw is you want whatever you're cutting to not move. All right, it needs to be supported. So on a, on a table saw and a miter saw against the fence, you need, it needs to be pushed against the fence. Otherwise, it'll grab a piece, it'll grab the wood and chuck it at the fence. And then it can go splinter a bunch of pieces, bad things happen. So that's what that's there for, okay? On this saw also, it has some feet that come out, um, which to be honest with you, I don't really use that often, okay? Because I usually do this on a miter stand. Um, but it does have feet over here that come out, all right? So you can, it'll give you a little bit more stable base um, should you need. Where's the, there it is, okay. Um, yeah, it does come with an arm. All right, so you can go on the left or right side if, with it. It goes right into a little hole in the back. And then you can go ahead and put your piece of wood here, whatever you're cutting, your material, and you can clamp it down so it doesn't move. So this way, left hand can hold one piece, one side of the cut, and this can hold the other side of the cut. So then you have your trigger, okay? It's got a little um, lock on here. You have to slide it over and pull the trigger, and it'll and she'll fire. Um, yeah, that pretty much covers most of the things you're going to use on the tool. Um, there is a light here. Um, so what's cool about this tool is it has an LED light right here at the tip. 
and that light shines a shadow down that is the blade. So when you're looking at, at, your, at your wood, you're looking at your cut you're going to make, um, wherever the shadow is on that wood is where the blade's going to cut. So you can account for the kerf or the actual blade width when you make your cut. But when you go ahead and collapse it for travel, um, it really does get pretty small. Let me show you. So I already took the feet that to come out farther and I brought them in, all right? So then you go ahead and take your miter saw, bring it to 60 degrees to the right, okay? Bring that in and then go ahead and take your slider, okay? All the way down, lock that in, and then go ahead and tighten it up. And there you go. Oh, one thing I didn't cover, but it's pretty self-explanatory, is here is a detent lock, okay? So in order to, to turn it, you need to press this in because that releases these detents. You see these little holes in here? It'll, it'll lock it for you. See, like it's going to lock it at 5 for me. Right, right there. So lock it at 15, right? There's another common angle, okay, which is 22 and a half. But that's what these are for, okay? You press that in, and then it'll allow you to move it. Say you want to do some odd cut. Say you want to do 10 degrees. You can go to 10 degrees, and then... Go ahead and clamp it down and it won't, it won't move. So all together with this tool, um, do I like it, not like it? Um, I like it a lot, actually. Um, it's, it's done everything I've asked it to do. That's even cut six inch pieces of, uh, six by sixes rather, um, treated. It cuts through, no problem. Um, it's very powerful, all right, but it's very cumbersome. So it's like 60 pounds, 65 pounds, something like that. So I'm um, strapping young lad so I can still do it. <laughs> but say I have 20 years from now, no, I'm not gonna bring this saw for little um, trim work. Okay, so I'll get something small, light, 30 pounds, and it'll do the job. But I like having more tool than I need usually because then when you need it, you have it. Um, the sawdust extraction sucks. Don't plan on it uh, saving you any cleanup time. You're gonna have all of that. But all the other features and tools really do make up for it. It is worm drive, which is one of the reasons why it was so expensive and I purchased it. Worm drive is a system that turns the blade and it's, it's, it produces more torque. So that's why it can cut through that six by six, um, no problem. Um, she's been good to me, I have no problems. However, one thing, uh, it really pissed me off actually. Um, my light, this has a LED light here that shines down and it casts a shadow of the blade. So you can see exactly where that blade's gonna cut when you go ahead and put your material there. My switch stopped working. Um, so I just took tape and taped it so it's always on. So when it's plugged in, the light is on. You, can, you, I, you just don't turn it off. Other than that, and the fact that it's heavy and big, it's great. So I highly recommend purchasing it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you did like the video. Uh, please go and like and subscribe if you haven't and then also put in the comments uh, what saws do you recommend or if you have any personal experience in this one um, that'd be awesome i like to talk about it and not a lot of people i've been able to talk to have experience with this saw so if you do please reach out um, other than that thank you for watching the video and i look forward to seeing you in the next